Welcome back. This is Judy Mario, and this is the World of Book Reviews. Thank you for joining us. We are talking with Toni Passini about her wonderful book, Alabama Blue. And she was saying that um, she wrote the book a lot to uh, help people understand that they're not alone and to help people get healed. I, I wonder, what did you find? Because I know it's got to be hard to tell the story. What was the most difficult part of writing the book? The most difficult part to write and to share, and I did a lot of uh, verbal sharing in uh, critique groups, and I found there was one part of the book I could not share. I wasn't able to read it or say it, and it's about giving my son away when I was, I, I got pregnant when I was 17, and he was born when I was 18, and I gave him up for adoption, and I knew I'd done the right thing, um, but that doesn't make it any easier, and I had understood that I would never have to see my child. But they brought him to me in my hospital room and said they could not take him out of the hospital and give him to the, the woman who was sent by the attorney's office that they could be liable. And I did what I had to do. They put him in my arms, I took him down, I gave him to the stranger, I turned around, I walked back in, I picked up a phone that went automatically to the cab company and just went guttural, I, I was primal. I was screaming and people were running. And, <laughs> and I realized that um, that was the day that, that little bit of light that I had called hope that I'd carried around for so long just a little bitty flicker was left and it went totally out I spent the next at least 12 15 years just trying to drink myself to death drugs whatever I didn't care anymore I just I just didn't want to hurt it's it's terrible when we were born into a situation that we feel like we can't get out of and then everything we try to do in our life, it seems like it gets worse instead of better. <laughs> and, and finally, you just figure you have to give up. And once you give up, I find that that's kind of a time when things start to turn. Once we uh, say, okay, I give up, God, it's yours, take care of it, I can't do this. And uh, you were telling a story about an old man at a hat check counter <laughs> and how he saved your life. And that story in here touched my heart because I have an old man that, that did a lot of really good things for oh. me when I was a young woman mm -hmm. as well. And uh, interesting how they come into your life. So tell us about why you credit him as saving your life. Uh, I absolutely do. And if I don't share anything with anybody except this, it's uh, always think about who you're talking to and how you might be of service. I worked at a restaurant in uh, Albany, New York, where I ran away from Alabama, went to to have my baby. And I was uh, getting very pregnant, and they wouldn't let me work the restaurant anymore, so they made me the hat check girl. And one of the, this wealthy man that came in all the time, this older man with the little patches on his elbows and all, um, he would come and check his coat and hat. And he started giving me trouble about, why are you just sitting there? You have so much time. You should be reading. There's so many wonderful books. And my attitude was, oh, don't start with me. I was a, <laughs> a DNF student. I was never going to be uh, literary. So just don't, don't make me, don't embarrass me. But he brought me a book one night. And he said, all I want you to do is go home and read this one story in it. And come, bring it back, and, and we'll talk about it. I did. I did it because he was a wealthy man, and I thought, I don't know what his interest is in me. It couldn't honestly be because he thinks I have a brain. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but maybe there's a good tip in it. The story was Hot Frog by Edgar Allan Poe. I didn't just read the story. I read all his poems. I couldn't stop. I took it back the next day, and what happened was phenomenal. He talked to me because he wanted my opinion. I found out that day that, and I hope this doesn't bother anyone to say, but it's true. That was the first time that a man had made me feel like I had something between my ears that was important other than something that was between my legs. Well, you know what? It's really special when we find out that we are smart and that somebody wants to hear what it is that we have to say. And it's incredible that you've written this book. And I'm, I'm telling you, it was, it was an interesting book. I could not put it down. And I, uh, there were points in here where I just got so mad I wanted to punch people out because I wanted to take care of her. I think you'll feel a lot the same way if you read this book. It's Alabama Blue, and we'll be back in just a couple seconds. I'm Jamie Lee Metz, CEO and founder of Skin Fitness here in Las Vegas. We've been serving Las Vegas for over 17 years. We're proud to announce we just won 2017 Spa of the Year by Image International. That's the skincare company of the Miss Universe pageant. 
We offer exclusive treatments like our Time Eraser Facial, which uses multiple modalities and literally erases time. Our Pore Purge, which is the ultimate in hygiene. And our Fire and Ice Facial, which literally removes and soothes the skin at the same time. Come see us at our new location here in Village Square. We look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome back. This is the World of Book Reviews, and we are talking with Tony Pacini about her wonderful book, Alabama Blue. And we've been talking about the book and your story, but now I want to talk about you as the writer. I want to know more about you. How would you describe your writing style? As I'd had no education, I never went to high school, and I just went back to school after 45 years at CSN. Um, and I was terrified of school. I was a horrible student, but we moved constantly, and I was asthmatic, and, and there was some crazy stuff that was in the schools in Alabama. For one, they wanted to do an exorcism because I had asthma. They said it was because of some other craziness, and so I was just terrified of school in, gen in, in, in general. Um, so when I did decide to put, write down my story, I started writing down each situation as a story. I'm a storyteller, number one, a writer, number two. And when I started sharing it at critique groups, people said, you can't write it like that. It's ass you're doing essays. And, but it was the only way I knew how to write. And uh, when I got far enough along that I started seeing that there was an arc, that there was a conclusion, I had to go back in, but I kind of started tying them together. And so uh, some people say there's two kinds of writers, a pantser and a planner planner someone does outline and all I'm definitely a pantser <laughs> you know I get it down and then I go somewhere with it or it takes me somewhere and I'm doing that now with my fiction and poetry as well but yeah. I'm a storyteller first yeah your characters are now building themselves mm -hmm. yeah I find that happens too they take over sometimes oh boy <laughs> <laughs> uh, who influenced your writing the most um, well I'm there's so many but um, Toni Morrison passed over uh, about three years ago, and my writing was not inspired by her per se, but her type of work, her work and others' work, always gave me hope for my work because I heard their voice, and I heard their voice in me. But when she passed over, everything I saw in the news or read about her, people kept saying that she had lived such an, uh, a fulfilling life, such a full life, such a real life, that she took a hold of it and, and made it happen. And that's when I went back to school uh, at 60 years old. And when I was young, I swear I never thought I'd make it to 30 <laughs> or 40. And at 60, I was run those halls with those young people at CSN, and I love it. Uh, I'm about two-thirds of the way through to get my uh, creative writing degree now. So the style of writing, or the, the writing itself, I guess, was inspired from a need to get it out there and help others. But people like Toni Morrison and, and so many others um, helped me believe that maybe my message had a place out there, that there were people who might read it. It definitely does. I thought that your uh, style was a very, very conversational. I felt like you were talking to me. And that's, when an author can do that, that is really incredible. When you can read that book and say, hey, she wrote this just for me to read. Um, who should buy the book and where can they get it? Uh, you can get it on Amazon, uh, but I also did an audio book, which was great because talk about being a storyteller. I got to tell the whole story from beginning to end, recorded it in three days, exhausting, but so well worth it. Uh, so on audible.com, Amazon, on Amazon you can get the uh, Kindle uh, ebook for just two ninety nine, or you can get the, the paperback, uh, or you can get the audio book and download it to your device. Um, Everyone, I believe, should read it. I was shocked. I've been shocked. You, you can look at my reviews. I think I have some really great ones. I'm very proud of what Alabama do, Blue has done in a year. Uh, but a lot of men are reading mm -hmm. Alabama mm -hmm. Blue, a lot of young people. I don't know that I have time to really get into this, but I will say that a lot of the youth that I'm getting to know on campus, the young men and women, they are carrying heavy loads today. I thought my load was unbearable. Maybe if they hear how unbearable my load was, it might let them know that they're going to make it. Don't do something drastic. Keep moving forward. Don't give up. So young, old, brown, white, black, uh, male, female, you know, I think that if we don't 
get out there and explore the possibilities and the differences and we'll never get along. The last thing that um, I want to say is that reality TV is a huge thing now. It is. And I can't understand it because most of it doesn't seem really realistic to me. But if you want light reality TV, then get into some good memoirs. Yes. That's what real reality is about. The memoirs are real reality. <laughs> I find that so often people's real life stories are better than anything any of us could think of. Yeah. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Judy Mario, my guest Tony Pacini, Alabama Blue. Thank, Thank you. you. Are you frustrated and wasting time searching for high quality education and entertainment and not finding it? Stop wasting your time. We've got your solution. Our three dynamic and unique online TV shows provide you with high quality and easy to find content. Everything from business skills and self-development to book and movie reviews and everything in between. At akexpertstv.com, you'll find high quality experts in their field. In one place, at no cost to you. Visit www.akexpertstv.com today.